Okay. Okay, it's working now. Ah, this is Jason Robinson from Illustration by Design. I apologize for earlier, uh, a few seconds ago, when uh, my uh, earlier live stream was not working. This one is, I hope. Hoping uh, that you guys can hear me. It's coming in fairly clearly, and uh, you guys can actually see what's going on here. Yes? No? I don't know. I can't tell. Anyway, I'm guessing it is working since I can see it on my phone. It's not just a big black screen. I'm assuming that you guys can see it as well. But I hope you guys are doing good. Happy Hanukkah to everyone who celebrates it. And an upcoming Merry Christmas to everyone who uh, celebrates Christmas. It is only in a couple days. So it is now Christmas Eve Eve. And uh, yay! September D, November 7 of 9 says it's working. That is awesome. I'm glad to hear it. Now I just have to get onto my onto my channel on my tablet so I can actually see what you guys are saying instead of trying to stretch my neck and look on my phone. Uh, All right. Now I see. I see my tablet, and I turn on the volume, so I don't have to listen to my stupid voice while I'm, let's see, all right, my screen just went black. Uh, let me sort this out, all right, oh, okay, now I can see stuff, hey, P-Money, P-Money's back, yes, um, Andrew J is here, Merry Christmas, Andrew J, and P-Money says, but now I have to go between you and Gary Shipman's stream, oh man, well, open up two windows, so you can see both me and Gary at the same time, hmm, can you, maybe, I'm not sure, um, but anyway, hope you're doing well, P-Money, Merry Christmas, I'm sure up where you are in Canada, it looks very Christmassy, down here where I am, in Florida, it does not, it looks more like more like late spring, early summer. It's a little rainy, and it's fairly, fairly warm. But, um, yeah, but, yeah, hope you guys are having a merry, very merry Christmas. As you can see, um, let's see, Cricket, uh, PMI says, Cricket, thanks for telling me your code to unlock your device there. I did? Hmm, okay. I'm not sure if I did, but. Oh well. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you find much of interest. Um, I barely use my tablet because it's like it's like five years old and it's broken. Anyway, um, yeah, as you can see here, I got a package today. I have no idea what this is. I've ordered a bunch of stuff um, over the past year in terms of comic books. And so this is a mystery package to me um, as well as to you. So I'm going to open it up and see what's inside, and you can you can follow along and watch with me. So, please hold. Oh, and if you haven't already, please uh, give this live stream a thumbs up, and also please, please, please share it out to Twitter and the YouTubes, and uh, let people know that I am live streaming right now. Uh, let's see, uh, September, de September D, I'm just going to call you 7 of 9 because your name is too complicated. Um, it says, it's Jawbreakers. Oh, it is? Okay. Because I, I, I didn't recognize the uh, Fulfillment Center, the, the um, location, or, or... Wait. Jawbreakers, isn't that out of uh, Texas? Because that's where your boy Zach is from. These, these are coming out of Maryland. So, are you sure it's Jawbreakers? I don't know. Anyway, give me a second. I'm, I'm going to share this stream out to Twitter so that people... We'll see it and stuff, and uh, I will be right back. So, argue amongst yourselves. Talk about Star Wars. Did you like it? Did you hate it? What did you think?
right. Hopefully that worked. Uh, oh, man, oh, my gosh. Let's see. Uh, oh, boy. Andrew J says, it's really a glitter bomb. Yeah, it might be one of those uh, packages where if you steal it from someone's porch, you open it up, and all of a sudden it shoots out glitter and also uh, releases a stink bomb. It could be one of those. So, But it showed up on my own doorstep, so I don't... Mm, I hope not. Someone might be pranking me. I'm not sure. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can get some music so I can... You won't have to listen to dead air if I happen to pass out or something. Let's see. Playlists. I need something that will not get me in trouble with the YouTubes. Let's try this. Play. Okay, that's pretty good. Anyway, um... P. Mai says, Canadian Post must be really slow during the holidays. I went, I've got five Indiegogo um, comics being shipped to me right now, and they're taking forever. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, same here. I mean, it's Christmas, so everything's slow. So, um, yeah, so let's open this up and see what I got. There we go. And luckily, it's in one of those tasty, awesome... Um, Gemini folders, so that is a good sign. Slice it open. I gotta get drawing. Yeah. Slice, slice, dice, dice, slice, slice. Come on, open up, open up. Show me what you got. Put that to the side. Try not to cut myself. All right, what's in here? It's upside down. Ugh. Let's see. P. Mai says, I know Jawbreakers, Meg, Jungle Comics, Packin's Land, and Eden Miller sketch card are all currently shipping out to me. Since it's almost Christmas, I probably won't get it till after Christmas. Oh, man. Okay, well, out of all those books, I've only gotten Jawbreakers, so hopefully it's that. But I have a bunch of other books I'm also waiting for, so... Of course, it's flipped over. Oh, wait, it's pretty thick. So, oh, it is Jawbreakers. Ah. Toss that aside. All right, as you can see here, through the plastic, it says Jawbreakers, God King. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I was, I've was. i been looking forward to this. So, how do I? Mm, okay. Well, it's not, it's not in a uh, combo bag, but it's, it's sort of shrink wrapped. So, P. Money is jealous, jealous. Yes. Well, I've been jealous, jealous of everyone who's gotten it before me. It seemed like everyone had gotten it before me. But thankfully, I now know that P. Money is the person who, along with me, had not yet gotten his. Gotten his. So hopefully P. Money will get his by the end of the week. Because um, I've been seeing people raving about God King over the past couple weeks. And I was like, when am I getting mine? But I was very impressed by, uh, if not so much by the comic book itself, I was really impressed by um, your boy Zach's um, customer service to people who got damaged books. And I was one of them. I got, I got a damaged book with, uh, with the original Jawbreakers, and, and he was really quick on, quick on the uh, trigger to, uh, to rectify that and send everyone a, a brand new book. That was in perfect condition, and I was really, really thankful to uh, to, uh, to Richard for that, your boy Zach. And I was, when he did that, I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna support this guy because he, he cares about the customers. Um, <laughs> Seven of Nine says, I have X-ray vision. You must have because you knew it way, way before I did. Um, P. Mai says, I even ordered the Kyle Ritter Jawbreaker poster, so I don't know if that also delayed it. I don't know, maybe. I I, I just ordered the book, so. Um, I kept it really simple. Ooh, nice. Yes, I got the tasty Ethan Van Skyver cover. Look at that. Ooh. Very nice. Look at that. All the corners are nice and crisp. I'm, I'm like a really picky comp, comic book uh, collector, so it's like no ding corners. That's very good. I, mean, I don't do something like... Uh, what was it called? CG Singh books, but I, I do care about the quality that comes in. Oh, it came with a poster. Okay, cool. Let's look at the poster first. Up, up, up. Stay. Don't move. 
in my chart, my chair in, so it doesn't slide down. Okay, here's a poster that kind of comes with it. I think it's that. Uh, is this the same girl from the last Jawbreakers, Zazie, the one who um, the um, I can't remember his name, the one with the with this power of a thousand slaves, that <laughs> that Jawbreaker. Is, is this is this by Miss Sashi? Is this by Sashi? That is by Sashi. Cool. Look at that. I could I could tell it was from Sashi or probably from Sashi from uh, from the Bobs. The Bobs told the story. So Sashi's very skilled at drawing Bobs. Very nice. Look at this. Another fantastic and fine illustration by Sashi Zazi. Kimai says yes, it's the same girl. Zazi by Miss Sashi. Ha <laughs> ha! That rhymes. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, very cool. I love the coloring. I mean, look at her, look at her pant legs. I mean, I, I know it sounds weird, but um, Sashi is a very good colorist. And as you may have heard, I hate coloring. So, um, you know, she, she did a really good job with this. Very nice. Great expression on the face. She looks like she's hosting a show like, like Brie Larson. Yeah, do you see those pictures, those uh, images of Brie Larson from her, from, uh, I guess she was, uh, she was, what was it? What's the term only? She was uh, sitting in for uh, was it Billy Jimmy Kimmel for his show, and she was a host for his show for for a night. But she uh, she apparently used her Captain Marvel money quite well. She uh, looked like she got um, she got some enhancements. She got some uh, uh, some certain 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 uh, certain aspects of her uh, aspects of her personality got uh, an upgrade. Since uh, Captain Marvel, so um, if you if you if you're not if you don't know what I'm talking about, just uh, check the interwebs, and uh, you'll probably be able to see it pretty quickly. It sort of stands out. Um, all right, let's see here. What's the best way I can? Uh, let me zoom in so you guys can see. Yeah, that's better. All right, now let's take a look at this thing. This is a cover, and I really like it. Um. I mean, Ethan Van Skyver is a is a really good artist when he takes time to 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 work on a, on a on a piece. Um, I mean, this is this to me looks pretty good. But what puts it over the top for me is uh is Kyle Ritter's colors. Kyle Ritter. I mean, you know, Ethan Ethan's not not like the perfect artist. He's really good, but Kyle Ritter's colors take. Ethan's pencils and inks, which, you know, to my mind, are usually like an eight or nine, and it puts it up to eleven. I mean, I, I sometimes I'll see Ethan's black and white work, and I'll and I'll think, eh, it looks kind of off. You know, it's good, but it looks kind of off. But then when I see it in color after Kyle Ritter, you know, puts his touch on it, it just it completely, I don't want to say corrects, but it but it you don't see the flaws anymore, or you see. Or, or that they're 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 not it uh, de-emphasizes the flaws in in Ethan's line work if there are any. So um, and it just makes everything look awesome. I mean things that that you know in the in the black and white inks are confusing to me. When I see the color, it's much it's much clearer. And uh, I remember when I saw the black and whites to this artwork. Um, you know, like this whole part where, um, I guess this is God King, and he has a bunch of demons under, under his control, they're coming out of a port portal here, it's obvious what's happening in, in, in this color artwork. In the black and white artwork, I was confused, I, I, I couldn't tell what was happening, um, and uh, I just want to, I, I guess I just want to give uh, Kyle Ritter the credit he deserves with, uh, with Ethan's art, I mean, it's just really, really good. Um... Let's see. Andrew J says Kimmel. Yeah. Uh, P Money says I prefer the the Jawbreaker title being at the top of the page this time rather than in the corner like the first book. Yeah, I think I think with the first book, um, Ethan and Zach, your boy, didn't uh, didn't plan it out really that well the cover. So um, Ethan filled up so much of the uh, cover area with uh, with sort of important information, visual information that Zach just sort of stuck the 
title where he could. Here, obviously, Ethan's left room for the title on the top, so it looks much better like a traditional comic book. All right, we got line art from uh, Aaron Alfecci here. We have written by uh, your boy Zach, Richard C. Meyer, uh, coloring by um, Color Channel. I don't know who that is. And lettered by everybody's favorite letter, Eric Weathers. Very cool. And also, he's got some more stories in here. He got Zazie Respawn, uh, drawn by Charlie Shogans, or Sn Snoggins. Snoggins? Um, you got Devil, Do Devil, Devil Dog Origin, um, drawn by Aaron Alfecci. And, uh, oh, it's written by Chuck Dixon. I'll have to read that one. And, oh, another one, one by Chuck Dixon. Uh, Desolation Wave. Um, line art by Renzo Rodriguez. And then, uh, cool, 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 cool. Wait, is there, it says there, there's another poster by Kyle Ritter. Is that on the, is that on the back of this one poster? I don't think so. It might be, huh? No, it's not. I don't, hold on. No, there's nothing on the back. So, um, maybe it's an additional poster that, uh, that you had to buy into, so, um, Let's see. Uh, Nasser Abadi says, "Wait, you took my wrench. You never had a wrench, Nasser." Um, P. My says, "And you, and after you get, have cricket a job and everything. Oh, after you gave cricket a job and everything, Nasser. No, actually, I, I'm giving Nasser a chance to uh, to to create a, a reputable comic book again. I mean, after uh, after uh, you know, he, he did he did a good job with uh, the last two books he did, but um, you know, every, everyone sort of." Dumped on Nasser, so I'm giving Nasser a chance to to re-enter the comic book industry by uh, by by gracing his book with my art. So, <laughs> um, okay. Um, Seven and Nine says Kyle's poster came with this variant cover. Okay, that's why. So, that's why I don't have it. We, and that that's fine. I mean, it's just uh, Team Nasser. Yeah, Team Nasser. Seriously, Nasser is very Nasser is a really cool guy. It's just that he's he's I. I, I just have a lot of fun sort of ragging on him, so <laughs> I don't know why, but um, but he, he he is he is a pretty cool guy. Um, all right, let's flip through this. This is by Aaron Alfecci, the artwork, and the artwork looks spectacular. Look at that! Holy mackerel! What the frick? I mean, this is like painted artwork, basically. I don't know if this runs through the whole comic book, but I mean, this is this is stellar stuff. Uh, this is just the beginning, but um, the opening pages, I guess, the setup, and then it goes into standard comic book coloring. But these uh, these opening pages, I guess, talking about uh, Knife Hand and uh, his background a little, and uh, the story up till now is very very cool, and it's an, it's a neat. The art style difference is very cool. Um, so, wow, nice stuff. I mean, this this sort of stuff harkens back to like image, you know, when it when when every other character had like claws and stuff. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, P. Money says, uh, yeah, Kyle's cover was an extra tier I got along with the book. And then Mark, oh, Mark, Mark Crawford's here. Team Timothy Cricket. Oh, cool, awesome. Mark, what time is it there? It's uh, thanks. Early in the morning. It must be what five thirty in the morning, where you are. Cool. Thanks for showing up. It's good seeing you. Let's see. Uh, man, these are these pages. These uh, Aaron Alfecci is a fantastic artist. You know what? It's like it's there's there are so many great artists that you've never even heard of. Um, you never worked for Marvel or DC. I not that that I know of. Um, and uh, they're I'm I'm really happy that these people have finally got are finally getting a chance to show their their talent. It's 10.30 a.m. where you are. Really? Because it's 6.30 here, so it's... It's like... 16 hours difference? Okay. Um, Mark Trevor says he's on a break from work. I've been listening. Okay, cool. Great. Now I'll have to keep talking, unfortunately. I don't like to talk, but... I guess I will. I will continue talking for the people who can't actually see what I'm what I'm showing. Oh man, this stuff is great. Dang. Yeah, great work. Um. Okay. Very cool. I'm just gonna flip through this real fast. Okay. Here's Kyle Ritter's uh, poster artist, sort of like the cover, alternative cover. Nice, nice, nice. 
Okay, this is the Chuck Dixon uh, book. Oh, neat. Neat, neat, neat. Did Zazie die in the first book? I can't remember. Maybe she did. Okay. Great. Great stuff. Devil Dog. Wow. I'm not going to show too much because um, I guess you can get in trouble for doing that. But uh, this looks beautiful. Oh, a little thank you from uh, from uh, Zach's uh, dog. Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah, Merry Christmas Eve, uh, Mark Trafford. Awesome. Beautiful book. I can't wait to read it. So, that is, uh, that's Jawbreakers. That's the book I got. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Zach, for what appears to be another fantastic book. Um, uh, another great product, and I, I look forward to reading it, and, uh, you know, eventually, hopefully, giving a, giving a review on it. Um, but, uh, yeah, great stuff. So, I put this away for later consumption, and I will get started on working on the cover for Nasser's book, um, Secret Comics Presents, which we are going to launch in uh, March of next year. So in about three months, we're, we're going to uh, launch uh, that uh, this new anthology book, a horror anthology um, of about three or four stories, short stories that Nasser has come up with. And uh, I will be illustrating the book, and hopefully if they do, if uh, Nasser decides to do future issues of it, we'll have other artists working on it as well, um, you know, one on each story. But for now, the only person he can convince to draw for him is me, so I'm the only one goofy enough to do it. So, I'm going to give it a shot, hopefully, uh, hopefully not screw it up too much, and uh, do some artwork that will thrill, excite, and horrify all of you. Uh, including my mother, so. <laughs> Let's see here. As you can see, I have my trusty light table here. Um, let's see, p Mice says, perfect, I'll make sure to save money for March 2020 for that comic book. Okay, great, that's one sale. We only have about 10,000 more sales to go. So, p Mice starting us off. Um, that's my light table. Because I'm going to have to trace my own artwork in order to get started on this cover. Um, I don't know if you guys saw, but I got started on the cover eh, a couple days ago. And uh, the way I usually work is I'll do like a rough layout. Oh, let me zoom out so you guys can see. Let's see, is that zoom in or zoom out? Let's see, that's zoom in. Let me just try to zoom out. Zoom out. Zoom out. Let's see. Nasser says $55 per copy at the lowest tier. Oh, okay. Good. That means we'll make at least 55 bucks since PMI is buying one. So, come on. Computer. Uh, not computer, but my cell phone is acting up here. No kids, no food in March. That's okay. Your kids don't need to eat. Keep feeding your kids. They'll, grow, they'll start growing too much. Too fast. You don't want that. Or maybe you do. You want them out of the house as soon as possible. So, Okay. Here's the rough that I did on the computer. So here's the logo for the for the comic book that I, that I uh, made up. So there you go, Secret Comics, boom, presents. And then this is the rough I did. Okay, from this rough, I did a uh, a tighter pencil drawing on a letter letter paper, letter size paper. Boom, that's it. Okay, so from here to here, and then from here. I blew this up. How much did I blow this up to make it um, the, the appropriate size for uh, for combo paper? There you go. About 137% I blew it up onto uh, tabloid size 11 by 17 paper. Okay? Went to Kinko's. And then uh, I just taped that sheet right here. That copy. Tape that onto my or underneath my drawing board, and then that's what the light table is for. Turn on the light table, boink, rah, turn that on, and then you can kind of see the artwork underneath it. And now I'm going to be tracing it onto the drawing board, and then from there I'm going to be inking it. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. There we go, bam. Uh, let's see, Nasser Abadi asked P Money, 
Um, we do digital and physical. I wouldn't mind getting both. Um, yeah, we uh, Nasha and I will be discussing all that, all different tiers and stuff um, over the next uh, couple of months, and then we'll decide on exactly what we're going to be offering everyone, and then we'll just go from there. So, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, the more formats people want, the better. So, um, we'll just, uh, you know, I, I, I don't see why not. So, you know, some people prefer digital. I personally prefer um, traditional comic books because I, I, I like the smell of newsprint and uh, holding a comic book in my hand. I love reading books, physical books. I, I mean, I, I, I have read e-books, but sitting down with a physical book and, you know, just, I don't know, I just, there's something about it. I just love it. So, um, Nasher says, agrees. He says, we, I think we might do a digital tier. Um, P. Mai says, since this will be my first cricket comic, I want to frame the fris physical and read the digital. Okay, cool. Well, actually, there, there, I did do another comic in the past, and you might be able to find it if you go on to, uh, go on to eBay. <laughs> if you want to read it. Um, so, just, just, uh, Look up, uh, look up Spawn Alley comic, or Spawn Alley comic book on eBay, and uh, I drew that back in the uh, in the early '90s for uh, for Todd McFarlane. So you might still be able to find that. <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. Okay, um, I'll be right back. I need to get some water because it's starting to get a little dry. Be right back. Let's see, Serena Sketches says, what music is that in the background? I like it. That is uh, Electro Swing, Serena Sketches. Um, it's basically um, 1930s and 40s swing music uh, set to a modern electric beat. So it's pretty cool. I got hooked on it. Okay, I'm going to start drawing, and, uh, you know, I guess let you guys listen to the music. If you have any questions, just feel free to ask. And if you haven't already, please uh, give this video a thumbs up and uh, share it out. Believe it or not, I'm sweating right now because I live in South Florida and it is kind of warm. So I, 
<laughs> no offense to people up living up north, I'm going to go turn on the air conditioner <laughs> because it's a little hot. <laughs> Let's see, Serena Scotia says, Florida at Christmas is brutal. Yeah, it's, you know, sometimes sometimes it is. I mean, I, I, it's always a sort of a crapshoot. Sometimes it's, it's actually nice. It's like, uh, it's almost like a, uh, a northern fall. You know, you can get down to, you know, I've lived here for 40 years. So it's, uh, you know, it's gotten down into, into the 20s at times in South Florida. Um, but those are rare. I mean... But on a, on a good during a good winter, it can get down to uh, to the fifties, sometimes even the high forties, and I love those winters. But you know, too often it it's usually like late summer, early fall weather. I mean, it's 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 in it's uh, it's been like the eighties, you know, high mid seventies this uh, this winter. So uh, it's been pretty warm. Um, Nasser says 11 viewers. Why well, I guess more viewers, more watches than me now. I don't know about that, Nasser. Actually, Nasser is, uh, if you haven't ever watched uh, some of Nasser's Rubik's Cube streams where he doesn't do anything other than play his Rubik's Cube, he'll, he'll get like 15 people watching him, which is pretty annoying <laughs> for me. I'm like, he's not even doing anything. Why are you guys watching him? It's like one of Nasser's old, um, you know, lunch streams where he just in his car wouldn't say anything. He just like sit there like smacking his his sandwich um, and staring at the camera, and he get like twenty people watching him. You know, like they're like people you know going going to the zoo and watching the pandas. So, <laughs> the Nasser's like a com comic book panda for people to watch while he's uh, doing various uh, various nonsensical things. Um. Uh, Mark Trafford said, just checked eBay. The only way I could, I could find to get the Spawn comic was to buy the whole playset. It was, uh, wow, $172 plus $60 shipping? Wow. Well, the, um, of course, um, you know, $150 of that was for, for the actual comic book. And then, and then you know, they, they, they would charge you $22 for the actual playset. So more, most of the value comes from the com comic book that I drew. <laughs> but, um, oh, wow, okay, that's cool. Um, but... Actually, sometimes, just check every once in a while. You can find people selling the com comic book just by itself. And then you can probably pick it up for, I don't know, 10 bucks or something. Um, because I, I've looked over the years. It's like, oh, cool, they have my comic book up again. And they're only selling it for, for 5 bucks. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. At least someone, 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 someone might buy it. So, um... P money says I'm in Canada. You're hot. I feel so sorry for you. You should P money. It's it's not easy, you know, having summer weather. I mean, you, you know, you, you I, I live probably eh, five minutes from the beach um, in South Florida, and yeah, it's, it's it's tough. It's really tough, you know, in the middle of the day, being able to drive to the beach and seeing seeing people laying out and just hang, you know, sort of uh, sun tanning and stuff. It's a uh, it's rough living down here, so yeah, I appreciate your your uh, your sympathy. We we need it. It's it's, it's, it's a tough life living in South Florida. Um, <laughs> so right, Sirena says you'll get more viewers if you draw Nasser. No, if Nasser drew, he would get less viewers. Trust me, I've seen him draw. He's not going to get more viewers that way. Actually, N Nasser would pro would probably get quite a number of people with his with his artwork just to uh, just to sort of tease him about it. See, not uh, P. My says says to Nasser, it's hard to watch another attempt at Rubik's cube for the tenth time. <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of fascinated by it because I can never do the Rubik's cube. You know, I you know I played with it. You know, when they were popular back when I was in 
middle school, back in the early 80s and stuff. Um, but, you know, they just frustrated me. I mean, you, you have to take time to sort of learn the tricks and stuff. And uh, Nasser, Nasser, Nasser's done that. Um, you know, I guess he, I, I don't know, he, he, I don't know if he's memorized stuff or what, but he, he does them pretty fast. It, you know, I would, it would take me, <laughs> it'd take me months to completely, completely solve a Rubik's Cube. So I give, uh, I give Nasser credit for, uh, for mastering the cube. You know, Nasser can't draw, but he can solve a Rubik's Cube, so all he has to do is find some way to monetize that skill. <laughs> Nasser said, I ordered some new cubes today from China. Uh oh, Nasser's, Nasser's ordering communist Rubik's Cubes. They're, pro they're probably bugged. So be careful, Nasser. Don't start ordering Rubik's Cubes from North Korea. You don't know what they're going to be sending inside of them. <laughs> Nasser says, it's a simple puzzle that people people overcomplicate. That's Nasser's way of saying that, uh, that I'm dumb. Because <laughs> I can't solve it. He might be right. <laughs> Nasser then says, if somebody has a cube they want me to solve, I'll do it for 50 bucks. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No thanks, Nasser. That's all right. I appreciate the offer for that. All right, let me see here. What time is it? It's four. No, sorry, it's uh, six forty-eight right now. I want to finish this by eight o'clock, at least the outline for this, um, so I can start inking it. In a future stream, um, but I want to get. I mean, I want to get this down on the uh, on the board. So I'm gonna try to focus more on the uh, actual tracing than on me talking. Um, 45 degrees Celsius the other day for me. For me the other day, it rained a bit. A little bit today. Everything is still on fire. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Dang. Um, it's weird being able to look directly at the sun. It's red because of the smoke. Dang, that stinks, Mark. Um, I keep forgetting that it's a uh, it's it's a uh, summer down there where you live. So, but yeah. Um, now, are you? I keep forgetting. Are you in Australia or are you in New Zealand? Cause I, I'm. I thought the fires were. Only or in Australia and not New Zealand, so maybe, mm, yeah, yeah, that's terrible. Um, P. Mike says I give Nasa credit too. I had to choose between Rubik's cubes and girls. <laughs> yeah, Nasser Nasser chose poorly. He chose the cubes rather than the girls. Um, <laughs> Wow. Wow. <laughs> Sarina says, North Korean Rubik's Cubes have tiny bits of anthrax in the squares. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, wow. Mark Trapper says, 45 degrees Celsius is 113 degrees Fahrenheit. That's, that's death weather. Sheesh. No. P Money is uh, saying... Uh, to Mark Crawford, you and I, buddy, for the metric system. No, no metric system. No, I am not a. Oh, I'm an I'm American, so we we don't go for that metric system. Let's see, Sydney, Australia. Okay, wow, dang. What? Serena says she's been inside North Korea for 10 minutes. That was enough. When did you go? Are you serious? You went to North Korea? Um, Nasser says, I hate the metric system. Celsius 233 doesn't have the same ring to it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, Nasser just finished reading Fahrenheit 451. So he converted to uh, to Celsius instead of Fahrenheit. Yeah, he finally read Fahrenheit 451. After, I mean, most of us read it in high school. So, um, Nasser is finally catching up with the rest of, uh, rest of American society. <laughs> but 
but it's, it is a good book. Nasher enjoyed it, so I'm glad he finally had a chance to read it. Oh, wow. Sheesh. Sarina says she was deployed to South Korea when she was in the army, and she visited the DMZ. Wow. Dang. You are tougher than I am, Sarina. I, uh, I thought about, you know, well, not, I don't know how serious I thought about it, but I considered joining the military um, during the first Gulf War um, for like a New York minute. And then I realized I am not built for it because, one, I don't like the idea of getting shot at. <laughs> and two, I don't like people telling me what to do. I'm, I'm not... I, I can take orders, but I, I don't like taking orders, per se. Um, and especially in the military, when you don't take orders, you get thrown in jail. And I don't like going to jail <laughs> when you don't follow orders. So those three prospects, possibly getting shot at, not liking taking orders, and the prospect of me getting put in, put, getting put in the... Uh, and the Huskow, um, if I didn't follow orders, kept me from uh, joining the military. That, and also, I lack the guts. I, I, you need to have, you need to be tough to join the military, and I am soft. And uh, the military does not need more soft people. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, uh, they're, they're better off without me. <laughs> um, oh, dang. 709 says metric system is communist. I wouldn't go that far, but it's, uh, I don't know. I, it's just, um, you know, it's just because, I, you know, I, I wasn't raised on it. So, you know, it, it's it's probably the same way that, you know, kids today, dang nabbit, kids today, the, um, the way they, they think of uh, writing in longhand, writing in cursive. Um, they haven't grown up with it, so they see it as confusing and unnecessary and a pain in the butt. I think that's probably how I and uh, probably most most Americans think of the metric system. I mean, we we know some things about the metric system. I mean, we have we have a rough idea, but but you know, um, you know, we know what a kilometer is. It's a thousand meters. You know, we know what uh, you know. We know what centimeters are. Um, but you know, breaking those things down, um. You know, converting, say, kilometers to miles, you know, most of us don't have a clue how to do that. You know, we have a rough idea. You know, I know roughly, you know, five kilometers is uh, 3.3 miles, I think. That's only because we have 5K races here, which kind of are kind of confusing as well. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I, w I wouldn't say that it's, uh, it's communist. That's a little, that's a little too much. <laughs> I just consider it confusing. Oh, Nasser agrees that the metric system is communist. Well, now, now you know it's not communist because Nasser is usually wrong. So, so thank you, Nasser, for that confirmation. Um, Serenian Sketch says, yeah, taking orders is important. It is important in, in, in the armed forces. So, it, and it's just that I'm not, I'm not, it's not, it's, it, it would be difficult for, for me to a certain extent. And I would, I don't know, I don't like getting yelled at either. So, eh. <laughs> getting yelled at is part is part of being in the military as well. So you have, you have to be you have to have the you have to have the intestinal fortitude to be able to put up with that and uh, not start crying, as I'm prone to do. If you yell at me too much, I'll start crying. So it, it would be it'd be embarrassing if I were in the military. It's like shut up, stop crying. Your mama ain't here. <laughs> Stop being mean to me. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to go home. I'd be stuck. It'd be terrible. It'd be just like middle school all over again. And high school. So. <laughs> Serena says, you were smart to avoid the military then. <laughs> yeah, I think so. It's like I, yeah, I dealt with being I dealt with being laughed at all through uh, grade school, middle school, and high school. I didn't need to... You know, add to that mockery for the, for the next four or five years of my life by joining the military, where everyone, where you know, a whole new group of people will be laughing at me. 
So, better to avoid that altogether. Uh, Serena says it's brutal until you do something where the soldiers will accept you. The bullying, that is. Yeah, um, yeah, you need, you know, like I said, you need to be tough to, um, to, to be in the military. I mean, I, I um, and I understand why you need, you, you yeah, yeah, it's a military. You need to be tough and you need to be able to take criticism and, and, uh, you know, um, teasing and, uh, you know, bullying or whatever you want to call it. You know, it, and what's, not to sound, make light of it, but, you know, it, it does build character, it toughens you up, and it, it, you get to a point where it's just like, you know, screw you, it's like, you know, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm, you know, I'm gonna, you know, tough it out, and, uh, and do my job, and, and, you know, and then eventually you'll be, you know, respected by, by your uh, fellow soldiers, so, that's just the way, the way it is. Uh, let's see, um, Serena says, I was accepted after a couple weeks after I shot 49 out of 40 people on the range. Wow, shooting that many people on a range? That will that will win you respect. So I, I too, would respect you if you shot uh, 49 of my fellow soldiers in front of me. So, um, yeah, that's very impressive, Sarina. That's, that's when Sarina um, became, her, earned her double uh, O status, you know, her first two weeks uh, in the military. You know, instead of, usually, uh, James, you know, double O, Agents have to shoot. I think they had to kill like three, two or three people. Sirena just dialed that up to to eleven by killing thirty nine people on a range. So um, Nasser is wise. He says Sirena scares me. She scares me too. I mean, it, she scares me almost as much as Chester Busby does. When Chester Busby would tell stories about how he literally ripped a guy's ear off with his bare hands or gouged a guy's eyeball out of his skull. Those are stories that you never forget, and I'm going to add Sarmina's shooting 39 out of 40 people in the first two weeks of her being in the military. I'm going to add that to my list of scary people. So, um, oh wait, Sarmina, Sarmina is, uh, is clarifying. She says it's not people, targets. Okay, oh, okay, okay, sorry. I was like, dang, she's, she is, she's like G.I. Jane. She's, uh, you know, she's killing, killing strangers, you know, two weeks after meeting them. Um, <laughs> says, darn it. Um, I know. Yeah, people, I was a little disappointed too. I was thinking, it's like, you know, you couldn't even get to 40 people, but, you know, 39 is pretty good. 39 is pretty good. But no, that's, that's a really, that's really good for shooting. I mean, I'm, uh, I like, I like shooting, going to the, going to the range and shooting, but, um, yeah, 39 out of, 39 out of 40 is, uh, that is good. So, I'm not surprised that people respected you after that. G.I. Jane, did you assume their gender? <laughs> Says Nasser. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, Sirena has, uh, has let everyone know that she is, in fact, female. And that she is a mother and a wife, so I'm not assuming her gender. I'm simply assuming that she told everyone the truth when she said that she was married with a, with a child. <laughs> nah, sir. Nah, sir says a man can be a mother and a wife. <laughs> Nasser's been in Chicago too long. He's become woke. Uh, 79 says, uh, I shot a beer can wearing a Secret Comics t-shirt. Oh, okay, cool. Nasser has Secret Comics t-shirts? Huh.
<laughs> Serena clarif Serena confirms that she is in fact a woman. I don't think you had to I don't think that was necessary, Serena, but thank you. I'm changing the position of one of these fingers because before it looked like she was picking her nose, and I didn't like that. So I'm changing <laughs> I'm trying to change the position of one of her fingers slightly. See, it's 7 o'clock right now, so I have about an hour. Crisis video game. Does that count? Oh, oh, we don't have many many guns here anymore. Oh, ha, huh, yeah. Since you uh, you guys passed that uh, that law where they 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 steal all the guns from you. <laughs> um, so Rainy Sketcher says I'm only scared when I don't get my coffee in the morning. Otherwise harmless. Hmm. I think that's what most scary people say. <laughs> well, I'm not scary. You can you don't have to worry about me. Next thing you know, you know, you're waking up in the trunk of their car, <laughs> wrapped in duct tape and, uh, and saran wrap. Um, oh, uh, yeah, Serena, Mark lives in, in Australia, so they, they, they don't have, uh, AR-15s or, uh, or guns there, rifles or, you know, semi-automatic weapons. The government took them all. Um... Huh, the nose picking variant will be hot. It could be. I guess some people are into that. I personally am not. I find uh, find nose picking to be a little off putting. So. Huh. Nasser says Serena so wakes up and starts her morning by shooting 20 targets in a row. That's a good way to start a morning, Nasser. You know. And if you're if you find a girl who uh, wakes up in the morning and shoots 20 targets in a row to start off the day, marry her. Seriously. Every man should have a woman like that. So, Sarvi and his husband is a lucky man. Um... <laughs> Serena says, I stumble around like a zombie in the morning and try not to trip over my cat. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Mark Trafford says, only the criminals have the good guns now. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, that's why I'm thankful for the Second Amendment. Um, our, the founding fathers of America were were very wise men. So put that in, put made that the Second Amendment of, of the Constitution. So it's not going anywhere. We got guns forever, God willing. <laughs> um, Kimai says people mistakenly think we don't have guns in Canada. Fact is, getting an AR-15 is not as hard as you think. Okay, cool. That's good. I've seen some videos about um, about getting guns in Canada or, or shooting in Canada, and they've been very interesting. So, um, you know, it's uh, yeah. Um, oh man, so, see, Serena's an awesome wife. She got her husband a modded AR-15 for his birthday this month. Dang, that is awesome. Very cool. Um, Nasser says, I'd be lucky to find one. Rip? I don't know what that means. Find, what, find find a wife? 
Well, I don't know. If I, if I can find a wife, Nasha can find a wife. So. <laughs> don't worry, Nasha. Some, some, some women like weird people. So. You know, that's how I got married. So I'm sure there is a girl out there for you. And actually, a lot of, a lot of women like nerds. So. Do not, uh, never fear. The only thing is, uh, the, the one tip I can give you as, as an introvert, as a lifelong introvert, the one, the one tip I can give you is to, uh, l learn the art of listening when it comes to, uh, to girls, women, um, and learn how to, uh, how to just be friends with women. Um, you know, the, my, I looked, I sort of learned that from my roommate in college. He, he was a really good listener of women, and he was nerdy and a uh, really cool guy. But he 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 was friends with like every girl on the floor, and he would, <laughs> and every time you would see him, he would be surrounded by girls because they knew that that he was a really good listener, and so they they wanted to be around him because girls like to talk, and uh, you know, even if he wasn't the most talkative guy. He, um, he was, uh, like I said, he was a really good listener, and he was really good with, he was really good at being friends with girls, and because of that, he, he always had girls. <laughs> so, I sort of learned from that, that, uh, you know, you don't have to be a, a, a quote-unquote player, but, but it's, it's very helpful to just, uh, you know, be able to learn how to be comfortable around girls and, and listen to them, so, more than anything else. Um, P. Mike says, I watched my wife, my wife at a shooting range once. She looked really good. Nine months later, we, <laughs> what? <laughs> Nine months later, we had our first child. I guess she did look really good. Um, okay. Interesting. Um, Nasser says, I'm, I'm a good listener, awful talker. Well, um, I mean, I've listened to some of your live streams. I mean, you're, you're, you're not a bad talker. Um, so, um, you know, but it's, it's important to, uh, yeah, you know, to just be able to listen to, to, to women and, uh, and and sort of learn from them, um, in a sense. Be an observer of women. Be, um, so the more you observe women and learn learn what they're like, the better you'll be with them. Um, Mark Trapper says, it's funny, the criminals didn't just give up their guns, then the illegal guns quadrupled in value overnight. Never let them touch your First and Second Amendments. We never will. We don't trust me. The, the beauty of America is that, um, you know, there are, I think there are probably about 350 um, million people in America, and there are probably twice as many guns. So, the, the government ever tried taking, they, they can never take back our guns because there are so many of them out there. Um, and uh, they don't have enough manpower, and half the people they would sort of... Um, Enlist to to take back other you know honest citizens' guns wouldn't go along with it. Um, they would just refuse to do it, so it would never happen. And if they actually really really tried, like and tried to physically like take people's guns from them, there'd be another civil war in this country because uh, people would just they just take out those guns and say, "Oh, you want my guns? Here they are," and they just rain unholy heck on uh, on the government which is why we have the second amendment in the first place to protect us to protect us from uh, an overreaching government that tries to take away our rights so we would just be uh, doing what the founding fathers you know it's um, place the second amendment in place in the first place for um let's see show for some reason uh Oh, okay. I, I see why. For some reason, uh, YouTube hid Nasser's comments um, because of he used he used the the name Dick Cabot. <laughs> um, Nasser says, "For my streams, I listen to, to the Dick Cabot show to prepare how to talk to people." That's good. I'm surprised Nasser even knows who Dick Cabot is. I think uh, Dick Cabot was before Nasser's time. So very good, Nasser. I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed by your by going back to the classics to uh, learn how to do things. Very good. There's hope for you yet, Nasser. All right, 
Let's see. As you can probably tell, this is the anti-drawn and quartered stream, where I draw as slow as molasses in January, as opposed to uh, very quickly and accurately, like they do on drawn and quartered. So, I, I consider me the, the anti-Mike Miller, <laughs> whereas Mike Miller would have the drawing completely finished and inked by this time, I am still busy tracing my own drawing. <laughs> Uh, seven and nine says I posted pro proof of my marksmanship on Twitter. Oh, good. Cool. Um, oh, not sure has to go. Um, I have the house to myself, so I can read in peace for once. I just started the haunting of Hill House yesterday. Uh, the story, um, or the movie? And who was that written by? Was that Edgar Allan Poe, The Haunting of Hill House? I can't remember. All right, this is what I got to date. You can sort of see it. Let's see. All right. Surely, um, I, sh I just said I could read. Of course, I meant I mean the book. Surely, Shirley Jackson wrote The Haunting of Hill House? Okay. Now this is, hmm, let's see. confused about where <sighs> sometimes it's a little hard to see with the light table not as hard as a lucid machine but it can be hard Alright. 
Uh, Serena says, just got back. Yeah, a lot of girls like nerds and guys that listen to them. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, problem for me has always been, even if girls liked me, to overcome my shyness. So the problem wasn't so much me attracting girls, it was me overcoming my own stupidity and uh, getting to a point where I felt comfortable enough to uh, to go further from, you know, just listening to actually, you know, the whole like-like stage. <laughs> you know, even, even if they were sending me signals, I was... Uh, I was often too scared to to do anything about it so I finally got over it thank goodness <laughs> it's much more fun to uh, to be more than just friends with girls so and my wife and I are, are, are very good friends um, which is half the fun. I, I, I really I enjoy spending time with her. And teasing her and then, you know, she has fun teasing me and then bickering and, you know, she enjoys beating me up and stuff, so it all works out.
need a sheet of paper, sheet of paper, sheet of paper, sheet of paper, to, uh, I'll use a sketch of Noster's zombie hand, um, to, uh, put underneath my, uh, my wrist, because, uh, I don't want to smear the pencils I've already laid down. Ah, okay. I'm getting confused here. I was like, what am I? I have a shadow behind this character, so... 
I have to look at my original drawing to make sure I'm drawing the right thing. Hair always gives me problems because I'm I always struggle over what to what to do with it and hairstyles. So <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out this lady's hair. That's fairly good, I think, but I still need to work on it. Now for the fun part, and I say that sarcastically because for me it's, again, something that I always struggle with, the shadows. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I spend so much time just doing line work, almost like, like coloring book style, without adding dimension and color to it, that, um, I've, you know, as, as art styles have changed over the, over the decades, I've kind of had to adapt and uh, start drawing them in a more sort of detailed way that includes a lot of shadowing or fair a fair amount. Um, but my style tends to be like the 
1970s Marvel style that doesn't have that much shadowing in it. Um, you know, for standard superhero comic books. Um, I think DC has always been fairly shadow heavy, especially with book books like Batman and stuff, and Neil Adams' uh, more realistic style. Um, but, um, yeah, so. Now I'm learning. I'm trying to learn what I should have learned decades ago <laughs> in terms of placing shadows and stuff. Excuse me. What time is it? It is 7.33. So, let's see if I can get as much time as possible in the next half an hour. Smudge it. that I wish I had the, uh, the skill of Matthew Weldon or um, Cannon White because those two guys are able to lay down shadowing like nobody's business make things look three dimensional I on, a, on the other hand tend to struggle with it But I'm learning how to fake it pretty good. Fairly well. Fairly well. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm probably a... Probably a 5 when it comes to faking. Faking shadowing. <laughs> I'm not terrible, but I'm not, the, I'm, not, I'm not great either. So...
Hey Nighthawk Warrior, how you doing? Good seeing you. Hope you're doing well. Alright. Alright, this is coming pretty good. You just have to uh, do the. Oops. shading on here. Sorry, shadow. Shadow. Behind her. Let's see here. Let's see, um, Nighthawk Warrior says, how's everyone? Also, Merry Christmas. Yeah, I think everyone's doing good. Um, just, uh, doing last minute Christmas stuff. I, <laughs> well, I still need to get my brother something, so. Well, I got him, I got him something, but I need to get him something else, because his birthday is in January, early January, so I try to get, I have three relatives whose birthdays are, like, in late December, early January. My brother, his son, and my niece are all within that sort of one week period, maybe 10 day period between, uh, you know, from, from Christmas until, you know, January 10th. So, um, so I got, I, I got everyone else presents for the birthday, but I didn't get one for my brother. So I need to get him something. That'll probably be food because he likes to eat. <laughs> um, Nighthawk Warrior says, cool color, cool cover. Thank you, Nighthawk Warrior. Um, have a good night, everyone. I'm working on my upcoming comic book project, Savage Hawk, issue one, pages three and four. Okay, so Nighthawk Warrior has gotten in his, his, the first of many nightly plugs that he gives on various channels. So everyone, go subscribe to Nighthawk Warrior and check out his stuff because he's working on his comic book, Savage Hawk. And uh, pages three through four currently. So go over there, check him out, subscribe, give his uh, give his his videos a thumbs up. Like you should, like you should, blah, like you should do to mine. Blah. As you can tell, I'm very poor at live streaming because I'm not I'm not as smooth and flawless as as Nasser is. But uh, I'm gonna keep at it. See if I can get better. But uh, yeah. If you would give my give my live stream a, a like and a sub as well, and uh, make sure to hit the bell for notifications, and uh, make sure that you click all for uh, for all notifications, so that uh, you get you get the notifications, and uh, YouTube doesn't doesn't exclude you for for whatever reasons it may have. Um, now I am all right. We gotta. I'm trying to visualize in my head the way the shadow behind her will go. It's always tricky. My Hawk Warrior says, thanks for the shadow. I also gave your live stream a, a like button already. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Nighthawk. I appreciate it. Original. Now I'm looking at the copy, and the lines I laid down and lines didn't show up in the copy as well as they did in the original. So I gotta, sorry, I gotta peek here, see exactly where the transition is here. 
Okay, I can't really see it in a, in a photocopy. Can I see it? Oh, there you go. That's much better. That's mo better. Much mo better. Oh, if you guys happen to see um, Saturday Night Live this past weekend, um, SNL, um, Eddie Murphy hosted it. And I didn't know that he was going to be hosting it. And it, it but it was the first time that I'd actually watched Saturday Night Live live. Probably in a decade. I just I just happened to look at the clock, and I was like, oh, it's 11.30. I, mean, I haven't seen Saturday Night, yeah, Saturday Night Live in a while, so I'll check it out. And I turn it on, and it's Eddie Murphy, and which I thought was cool. But then he starts giving his monologue, and it just became hilarious. It was so funny. Um, if you have a chance, check out his monologue on YouTube. Um, he gets like... If, he doesn't get every major black um, comedian on stage with them, but he, he gets he gets a lot of the main ones who, who started off on Saturday Night Live on stage with him during his monologue. Um, he gets uh, Chris Rock on there. Uh, uh, Tracy Morgan shows up. Um, who else was on there with them? Um, Keenan Thompson was there. Um, Dave Chappelle shows up, which shocked me. Um, because Dave Chappelle is kind of a hermit. Um, you know, he'll, he does, uh, you know, he does comedy shows once in a blue moon, but, you know, for the most part, you know, I kind of think of him as being like a, almost like a hermit, even though he, he yeah, but he's hilarious. But it was, it was so good. I mean, and he, he brought back all of his classic characters, Mr. Robinson and, uh, Gumby, Buckwheat, and it was, it was just a great sort of callback to, uh, to what I consider Saturday Night Live's uh, prime back in the uh, back in the early to mid '80s when when uh, Murphy was uh, was the star of the show. So yeah, it was a great it was a, it was a great episode. And then he he, he he totally ragged on Bill Cosby. It was, he, it was it was so funny. It was just hilarious. He he this one joke during his monologue he. Uh, he says, who would have thought, you know, 10 years ago, who would have thought, no, 30 years ago, sorry, 30 years ago, who would have thought that, you know, today I, you know, I'd be a stay-at-home dad and uh, Bill Cosby would be in jail. <laughs> Very funny. But, uh, Oh, there are four people left. Oh no, I've chased everyone away. Let's see, it's 7.46, got about 15 minutes left before I want to sign off here. Or rather, you know, I want to get this mostly done. Now in the shadow, she's casting a shadow behind her. And what I want to do is draw like a bunch of like scary, scary mouths coming out of the shadow to get her. So, that is what I'm drawing now. And I'm, I'm drawing what I, what I like to term my, uh, my modified scary John Byrne mouths. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, a lot of you know who John Byrne is. He's you know famous writer and artist for DC and Marvel comics back in the 1980s and 90s, 70s, 80s, 90s, late 70s, 80s, 90s. But he, every once in a while, he would draw like monsters, um, and they would have these really what I always thought of as scary, creepy, unnerving type jagged teeth, and they're sort. You know, they're kind of reminiscent of, of the craggy teeth that John Byrne would give um, characters like Doomsday. But, you know, whereas John Byrne's, sorry, whereas uh, Jack Kirby's sort of craggy teeth, you know, were like, they're like big, almost look like they were made of stone. Um, you know, and they were kind of just clunky, big teeth. John Byrne would make the, these really sharp looking horrific teeth. Um, at least in my eyes, and I always thought, I was like, man, those teeth look crazy. 
Um, and, and I kind of, um, whenever I want to draw like a scary monster, I kind of adopted that sort of scary look to the teeth. Because he would draw like, uh, again, they'd be, they'd, they'd be really sharp, but they'd be craggy like, like Jack Kirby's. And I kind of like that, so. Oh, uh, only one person left in the chat. I scared everyone off. <laughs> with my with my teeth story. Oh well, that's all right. I appreciate everyone who showed up. Is it still running? I'm hoping it does. Yeah, it's still running. So I can see my hand moving. So I'm hoping it wasn't wasn't my drawing. I'm assuming it's just my my babbling. That's all right. If you're still listening, please give this give this stream a, a like. Give this video a like, thumbs up, and uh, share it out to your friends. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Oh, Mark Trafford's still here. Oh, it's, it's back to four. Yeah, it's it, uh, like a second ago. I said only one person was was left in the chat, and uh, now it says four. So I guess some people are still here. Yeah. YouTube is a fickle, fickle mistress, Mark Trafford. You never know if you're doing well or not. So. But uh, it's very cool to see. I think I, had, I think I had like 11 people watching at one point. I thought that was very cool. That's the most people I've had in a long time. So. I'm very thankful to everyone who has shown up and uh, given their support to my channel and my artwork. So, thank you, everyone. I'm going to try to make a really cool looking comic book for you guys and for Nasser, but mainly for you guys. <laughs> Nasser's secondary. If Nasser likes it too, that's fine. But I mainly want to make a comic book that, that you guys will like. And when you, when you get it, You'll see the artwork and you'll say, oh man, that, that's, I got my money's worth. And I hope you guys will enjoy it when you, uh, when you get it, when you see it. See that? That's sort of the uh, sort of the look I want. Where this will all be in black, 
the shadow behind her, and then these sort of scary looking teeth will be popping out all around her from within her shadow. So that's what I'm that's what I'm going for. Hopefully it won't look, look too goofy. <laughs> Now I kind of have to give myself time limits, like the two hour mark when I do drawings um, for, for work, because otherwise I get lost in sort of the enjoyment of drawing and I lose track of time. And instead of it taking two hours, it'll take me four hours. <laughs> so time limits are good. Um, I've sort of learned to sort of keep myself limited to a certain time frame in order in order to get things done within that time frame. Even when I'm like when I'm drawing pages, like actual panel pages, I'll give myself a time limit to do each panel. Um, like if I have, if I have a page with uh, you know, four panels on it, I will allot myself, say, half an hour to do each panel, um, you know, if I'm penciling it or if I'm making it, because otherwise, it, it, and, and it, it guess it depends on a panel, and if it's like a full page spread, that's one panel, it's going to take more than a half an hour, but if it's a standard page, you know, with standard difficulty, you know, I'll, I'll set a time limit for myself so that I stay on track. And I don't waste too much time obsessing over something. I, I, I just have to let it go um, after a certain amount of time and move on. Because otherwise it, it, it would take me a lot longer than I, I, I would want it to. So I found that's a good way to keep myself from, in a sense, procrastinating. Or um, just uh, sort of wasting time. So it's one way I've, I've learned to sort of trick myself to, to get stuff done. Seven fifty-eight. Been pretty close to two-hour 
limit I set for myself. That's good. Not too far off. I'm almost done with this. Almost done. Almost done. Yeah, and this week is the uh, the last episode of The Mandalorian on Friday. I cannot wait. I don't know if you guys have been watching it. That I mean, that really just jumped up a notch this uh, this past Wednesday, last Wednesday. Um, it it got really good. Um, I mean, it's only a, uh, like a half an hour to 40, 40 minute show, but they they packed a bunch in that forty minutes. It was really good. I really encourage all you guys to watch it. And added with a cliffhanger, which was cool. Um, cannot wait till, till Friday. And you know, did one thing that Disney Plus did with with, uh, with the Mandalorian. I think some other streaming services might follow. Is they didn't release most streaming services when they, when they release a show, they release all the episodes in one day. You know, on the same day, all at once. So you can so you can binge watch the show all at once. You know, you can watch episodes one through ten or whatever. Um, you know, all on the same day if you if you were so inclined. Um, the Mandalorian doesn't do that. The, um, Disney is releasing them. You know, the the standard old fashioned way of network TV. They release one episode per week. So, oops, something's happening here. Um, skip. Um, hmm. is my thing locking up? I'm assuming it's still going. Um, so, um, they released one episode, a, uh, one episode a week for The Mandalorian, and that just makes you that much more hyped to, uh, to, to watch it and to stick around to watch it the next week. Um, I think the, sort of the hype between, behind The Mandalorian has been extended Beyond what it would have been if they just released all up all eight episodes on uh, uh, on the first day, and I guess that's now it's been two months. It came it came out two months ago, um, so if they you know people wouldn't be talking about Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian two months after the fact after it premiered if they if they just released all the episodes at once. I mean the the hype would have died down probably after the second week, but by um, releasing an episode a week. They extend that hype, you know, for you know, for two months or, or longer, um, and uh, and also they extend people's enjoyment of the show, I think as well. So yeah, that was uh, pretty smart of, of Disney to uh, to release it that way. So I give them I give them credit for uh, for thinking ahead, and they're not really doing anything new. Except in terms of, you know, it's new in terms of, of streaming services. Most streaming services are very, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They, uh, you know, they, they, they give everything, they give everything at once by providing all the episodes in one fell swoop instead of making people wait for it. So, um, Disney decided to go against that sort of instant gratification um, model and uh, and go back to the to the old standard position of one episode per week and you just have to wait for it. <laughs> and that's uh, that's not a bad thing. I think that's good. I think, I think that's healthy for uh, for our society society to uh, to have to wait for something. No, it's shocking. It's shocking, but that's how television has been for uh, for decades. So uh, I think we've kind of gotten spoiled by uh, by the ability to uh, binge watch. We're better off sort of having to wait a little.
Okay. I think that is the line work for now. More or less. Okay. Got some things here. Let's see. Some of the bosom lines. Let's see. Shadowing. Now I'm going to improve some of the shadowing. As I uh, take this to ink, so I'm keep on hitting the camera. A mistake. Sorry about that. Standing up and giving it a look, see a once over. See what I've missed. And I'm sure I'll see more later on. This will all be in black, except for the teeth. Black, 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 black. I was trying to figure out what, well, right now the cover is in black and white. So I'm not sure if, if we're going to color this cover or not, because most of Nostra's covers, if you've seen uh, uh, Stardust and Trixie Kane, they're black and white covers. Um, I think Trixie Kane had some red in it, but it was basically two colors, either either black and white or black and red and, and white, the color of the paper. This one, we might, like I said before, I don't like coloring, but I can color. It's just that coloring takes a long time for me. So I think right now it's gonna be a black and white cover um, with the color logo. Um, we might make we might make this a color cover as a stretch goal or we might offer the color cover as a separate tier I'm not sure yet not sure and I will have to talk about that um, but uh, I'm gonna try I'm gonna make this work as just a black and white cover and then also make it look cool as a color cover if we decide to go that route um, so, we'll see. We will see. I kind of want to see it in color. Um, even though I hate coloring. It's just that it would take more time. <laughs> um, so, this is the cover. Pencils so far. Anyway, um, I'm going to continue working on this and live streaming it. Um, probably at a later date. Um, and I'll go on to ink this after after you know cleaning up the pencils a little and uh, yeah got to figure out whether she's gonna be a blonde or a uh, or a redhead because um, I like redheads but I think she's probably gonna be a blonde so um, yeah we'll have to wait and see but anyway 
is now 808. So it's been about two hours and I got it done. That's good. That's awesome. As you can see, there's uh, little marks here. I don't know if you can see. There you can. There you go. Little marks here for the on the board to, for the logo. So this logo is going to go right around this area here. And then uh, Nasser's little logo for uh, Secret Comics will go here. And uh, you sort of see the layout rah, here. So same same deal, same dealio as this. And then the idea is that I'm going to take this image, and she's going to be looking in horror at the inside of the actual comic book. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to duplicate this cover and put it on this book. So it'll end, end up being an infinity cover. In that's the idea behind it. She'll she'll be horrified by the comic itself. So that's that's where this is going. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the stage that it's at right now. And uh, I, don't know, I think I think we're probably gonna offer these original um, covers, original artwork from the book, as uh, you know, as additional sort of uh, tiers in the uh, in the campaign in March. So if you like, you have a chance to buy some of this original art, and uh, you know, so think about that, and uh, hopefully that you know these live streams will. We'll get people's interest up in the in the months before the campaign, and so that by the time the campaign starts, the pump will be primed, and people will actually want to buy the comic book. So that's uh, that's my that's my hope anyway. But anyway, you guys have any questions uh, or any any thoughts or any comments? Let me know in the chat because otherwise, I'm going to be signing off and uh, try to get something to eat. Um, but uh, yeah, this, this is this is sort of the direction the uh, the cover's going in right now, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I appreciate everyone who stopped by to say howdy and to check out the the artwork and to listen to me prattle on. I always appreciate when people do me the honor of putting up with my nonsense and silliness. I mean, my family has to, but you guys don't have to, so I appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy day to, uh, to say hello and to, uh, you know, deal with me. <laughs> it's always tough for me to figure out how many lines to put in, someone, in, a, in a woman's hand, because I know the... The more lines you put in, the, in her hand, the more the older she looks. So I'm gonna, I gotta, I'm gonna have to tone this down a little. I don't want her to look like a like an old lady. Let's see. Will there be an original art tier? Yeah, Mark Trafford. That, that's that's. I think that's one of the ideas we're gonna we're gonna consider, you know, think about doing that. How to how to do how to manage that? Um, selling some of this original art. Um, so you know, you guys will have a chance to maybe win the win this cover. Um, you know, or buy this cover rather, not win it, but buy it. Um, you know, when we um, and and buy some of the pages from from the book. So we'll do it. We'll do that. Um, ooh, Trusty Sidekick's here. Awesome. Trusty Sidekick. Now, Trusty Sidekick is, is another awesome artist, so I'm hoping that if Nasher does another one of these anthologies, that he will get people like Trusty Sidekick to, uh, to join in and, uh, and draw one of the, one of the, uh, stories. So, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell Nasher to, uh, to contact Trusty if he decides to do, if, uh, Nasher decides to do a second issue of Secret Comics Presents. And to contact Trusty to uh, to do one of the stories because Trusty's a very good artist. Um, yeah. So yeah, thanks, Trusty. I appreciate it. So I think that is it for now. Um, I'm looking forward to inking this, and I'm gonna try 
not to mess it up when I ink it. Um, that's the, I always have that fear whenever I ink. It's like, oh, I like the pencil. The pencils have gone really well. Oh, man, now I have to ink it. I'm going to screw it up. And that's my, that's always my fear. <laughs> It's like, don't screw this up. You made it look so good. I mean, because I've, I've always wanted to be a comic book penciler, but inking, I never had an interest in inking um, until until I realized that uh, you have to kind of learn how to ink um, to be a better artist. Because inking is a completely different skill set. And I've learned that over, over the years. It, you know, it's not just tracing, like they said in, uh, in Chasing Amy. <laughs> you have to be more than a tracer in order to ink. You have to be a, a really good artist in your own right. And, uh, you know, when I see really good inkers, like Mike Miller, he's a really good inker. Even though he does not spot blacks enough. Mike, Mike if you're listening, spot more blacks. Mike, Mike has become obsessed with cross-hatching. And uh, cross-hatching is fine, but... Um, but spotting blacks, I think, is still king, and especially with comic books, I, I love well-spotted blacks in a comic book. Um, and then you have people like like Matthew Weldon, who's like a master of doing both. It, it, Matthew Weldon's uh, cross hatching looks like spotted blacks, but it's not. It's just very fine line work, and uh, the guy the guy's a genius. Um, Oh, cool. Okay, good. Trusty said that Nasser and I chat back and forth. That's good. That's good. As long as as long as Nasser it has, has good artists in mind like you, that's that's awesome. Um, Draken says I suck at inking and lettering. Um, yeah, it, again, they're 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 just different skill sets that you just need to sort of acquire and uh, get better at. I mean, I, I, I'm 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 good at penciling, but everything else, I'm kind of kind of middling at, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm, I'm sort of a dabbler in, 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 in everything else. I mean, everything from inking to coloring and I can, I can do them, but I've just learned from doing them that they're really hard to master, at least for me. Um, some people take to it like a duck to water. Some people are really good at inking. And they love it. Um, I'm, I've gotten better at inking. Um, and I've learned to appreciate it more, but it's just, it's just tough for me because, because it, 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 it does require different skills than I've, I've gained from penciling. Um, you know, you need, you need to, you need to know, uh, you know, you, have, you need to concern yourself with line weights, um, in different areas, learning how to, uh, you know, create different textures with the inks. Um, it's just, you know, it's just, it's just tough. Um, Trusty Sidekick says, I worked as an assistant to a couple of anchors over the years. They taught me a lot. Yeah, that's that's great training. Um, you know, if you're able to do that, that's awesome. Um, I wish I had a steadier hand over long strokes. Okay, um, hold on, hold on one second, everybody. I'm hoping. Okay, cool. Okay, I think it's. I think we're back. Um, my internet activity was uh, my my uh, Wi-Fi was acting up. So I apologize. It was just going nuts for a second. It does that every once in a while. So I apologize. Let's see. Is it connected again? I'm hoping. Yeah, uh, yeah. It wasn't just on your end, trusty. It's just my my Wi-Fi does that every every so often. So I, when it happens, I have to like rush to the computer and let everyone know that it's not your computer. It's mine. It's my Wi-Fi. And why is this? Um... Hold on. Okay. I don't know why that was doing that. Okay, still working. 
Uh, Draken says, if you want to get an appreciation of inking, color people's inks. Staring hours at the tiniest details. Tag Nabbit, why does my, um... Sorry, my, um, my VPN keeps on trying to kick in for some reason. I don't know why. Um... Staring hours at the tiniest of details in the person's work. Yeah, um, the coloring will help you gain appreciation of, of, I think, a lot of aspects of art. And that's something else that I'm trying to get better at. It's just that it's just really hard. Coloring, I find, coloring can, but I, but I find it so difficult to do, to master. Um, I think it's, it requires a lot of patience to color um, comic books, and I, I, don't, I lack the patience. And it also requires a lot of knowledge, a lot of knowledge of color theory and other things. And I just, uh, ah, it's a lot of thinking, a lot of thinking involved when it comes to coloring line work. Because um, a lot of times the artist doesn't establish a light source with their, um, you know, with their shading and stuff, and so you have to do that. And uh, it's just a lot of, uh, you got to think, you got to think a lot. And, and I, 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 I just don't think a lot of artists consider that, um, you know, the, the sort of process that goes into, into being a good colorist or they don't appreciate it. Um, Draken says, a trusty psychic, apparently the secret to that is Pushing it or pulling the brush and pen and the speed, not the actual steady hand. Um, yeah, it might be. Um, Trusty Psychic says, mine dips out during the digital bullpen once or twice per stream, guaranteed. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Trusty Psychic confirms that, uh, yes, plus moving your arm more from the elbow and less from the wrist, from what I've heard. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of techniques. I, I, I've I enjoy watching good inkers on YouTube and and just sort of watching them draw and seeing and hearing how they do it. Um, like well, Walden Walden Wong is a really good artist to look at if you haven't already. Um, I think I'm gonna I'm guessing on how he, you 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 write his name. Um, let me try. I think it's Walden. Walden Wong, and Mike Miller knows him. Um, I think Mike Miller is going to have him ink some of his books in the future. He he does a lot of inking for uh, for I think Marvel and DC, or maybe it's just Marvel. But um, if you watch his videos on YouTube, they're really good. I mean, did, they they're not some of them are instructional videos, but but. He, he, he's, he's very good at explaining his technique for inking, and I, I really appreciate that. Um, you know, he inks with brushes and pens, and he explains uh, how, you know, how he goes about, um, you know, inking faces, how he goes about, you know, inking, you know, various textures and stuff, and it's just very cool. I, I like, I like his, his, his artistry a lot, and his methodology when it comes to inking. Uh, it, make, it makes it easy for me as, as a sort of a uh, dabbler, an inking dabbler, it makes it easy for me to understand so um, and to uh, sort of absorb mentally. Um, and I also like watching ma manga artists and how they ink. Um, I, I get a lot of inspiration from watching them as well. So, you know, just check YouTube. There are tons of artists out there, tons of great artists, whether they're pros or amateurs. Um, and, and other, and, and like I think I mentioned before, there are so many amateurs out there who you never heard of, and they're phenomenal artists, way better than some of the pros out there. And uh, they just they just don't they just haven't gotten their big break, and they just haven't gotten recognition for the work. So um, yeah, check out YouTube. You find tons of great artists out there. Um, and oh, Eagle Forty Three Zero, how you doing? Um, and uh, yeah, just learn all you can from as many people as you can. Like that, I think that's the that's the best way to. Uh, or one, 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 of the, one of the best ways to improve and learn. 
improve your improve your your artwork. Um, but anyway, that is uh, this is where we are right now with this cover. I'm gonna maybe piddle with it a little more, try to uh, clean it up, make it as uh, clear as possible for me. I, I, I as you might be able to tell. Um, I'm not an artist like Ethan Van Skyver who um, can just do like a rough sketch, like a really rough like outline and or, or thumbnail or whatever you want to call it, gesture drawing, and then just ink straight from that. I need I need to have definite guidelines when I ink in terms of uh, what I'm drawing. Um, hey, Eagle 43, good seeing you. Um, Dragon says, cover for what? Oh, this is a cover for... Uh, for uh, Secret Comics Presents, that is Nasser Rabadi's upcoming um, horror book anthology. So this is the uh, this is a rough, you know, the, the rough sketch I did on the on the computer for it. Um, I, I I I don't pencil on the computer uh, or ink on the computer. I, I do everything traditionally because I just I prefer it's much more fun to me this way. So um, what I did is I, you know, did this mock up on the computer and then. Uh, Based on that, you know, sort of traced it, looked at it, yeah, looked at it mainly, and then I drew this uh, this small pencil sketch, you know, on eight and a half by eleven paper, letter size paper, and then I blew it up. Uh, let's see, one hundred and thirty-seven percent. Okay, so it's you know, the size of uh, you know, it would fit onto eleven by seventeen, or rather the ten by fifteen boundaries of of a com comic book page, and then I uh, made a copy of it. And uh, I'm using that copy here. Ah, there you go. Here, and I'm light boxing it on a com onto comic book paper, and uh, using my my trusty light box. So that's what I've been doing uh, the last uh, two hours, two and a half hours almost. Uh, yeah, on this live stream. So uh, yeah, so this is it. It's for a secret secret comics presents. It'll be coming out on Indiegogo uh, this coming March, March 2020. But I'm going to try to uh, do the, uh, the pages here on my channel uh, live for you guys. So you can watch me draw it and hopefully, you know, help stir up some interest before the, uh, before the book goes live on Indiegogo. So, you know, just if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so you can uh, and hit the bell for notifications so that whenever I do go online and live stream, you guys can watch and, uh, you know, ask questions or whatever. And, uh, yeah, hope you guys, hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Um, Dragon says, oh, people are giving anthologies a go again. Um, yeah, I guess so. Well, Nasser is anyway. Um, I think, she, I think Nasser has a lot of stories that he wants to sort of get out, like short stories and stuff. And, uh, you know, in, in an anthology is a good way to, to uh, sort of do that. Each one of these sort of small stories, that one. I'm sure um, over the past year and a half, I know, um, um, but I, I think there have been a, a few, a couple, this is it for now, so I'm going to let you guys go, go about your business and uh, finish your, your, your last minute Christmas shopping <laughs> for, uh, for Wednesday, but uh, yeah, so this is it. Um, Again, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Whoa, don't fall down. Um, and uh, give this live stream a thumbs up if you would. I appreciate it. And uh, please hit the bell for notifications of future videos when, when I come back and continue working on this to ink it and uh, work on other pages for the, for the book. Uh, make sure when you hit the bell to select all notifications uh, so that um, you know YouTube will, will actually contact you uh, and your email or whatever let you know when I'm online. So, but uh, yeah, if I don't talk to you guys beforehand, hope you, everyone has a very, very Merry Christmas, a very safe Christmas. I want to wish all you guys a happy Hanukkah. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys soon. Uh, be good, because Santa is watching and he still has that naughty list. He's got plenty of coal to dish out to you guys. 
I'm sure Nasher's going to get at least one lump of coal. So, um, but anyway, you guys take care. I want to wish you all the best, and I will talk to you guys later. Um, oh, Draken says Mike's show is starting, so I guess I'm signing off just in time. Um, and he, Mark Trafford says, I miss Nasher Peace Theater. Good times. Yeah, well, with this book, you'll have a whole whole comic book full of Nostra Peace Theater pieces. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, peace, Draken. And uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. God bless us, everyone. Okay? You guys take care. Go watch, go watch Mike's stream. Have fun. I'll probably be over there, too. Okay? Take care. Bye.